Let's talk about bullying. When we think about bullies, the image that comes to mind is a physically imposing person beating on a weaker person with his fists. Maybe this person plays on the football team or is a remedial student and always getting into trouble with the authorities. But bullying is more subtle than this. Physical wounds heal quickly, but wounds of the psyche cut deeper. Let's meet Oz. Oz was a boy with no particularly distinguishing features, except for one. He had impressively large forearms, like a crustacean. And boy, did he milk that for all it was worth. Oz would park himself at a heavily trafficked intersection on campus and flex his massive claws in an unsolicited manner for passing female pedestrians. It was an odd mating ritual whose specifics were known only to Oz himself, and to my knowledge, was embarrassingly unsuccessful. Unfortunately, Oz not only liked to promote himself in an unsolicited manner, he liked to do so for others as well, by inventing undesirable nicknames for others and then promoting those nicknames at every opportunity. Oz was very talented at inventing nicknames, I would say in the same league as a controversial former president of ours. But unlike Mr. Trump, who skewered his political opponents with such a devastating strategy, Oz attached nicknames to those closest to him, especially those who naively considered him a friend at the time. Oz was a parasite with neither heart, nor brain, nor courage, but coveting all of the above. And in my sophomore year, Oz found willing hosts. That year, four of us boys moved into the same dorm and lived right down the hall from each other. It was one of the smallest dorms on campus, so we would interact with each other frequently. Other than Oz and myself, there was Leo and Stan. Leo was a good man, a courageous man, and uniquely popular with the finest ladies Chode had to offer. Ladies that Oz could only dream of attracting back to his chthonic lair. But Leo was also a troubled man encumbered with the heavy expectations of a hard-driving, self-made father, which forced him to grow up faster than perhaps he was ready for. Can relate. Stan, at the time, was a socially awkward boy and unsure of himself, but lying dormant inside him was a man of intelligence, breeding, and most of all, inherent good nature, whose emergence I was thrilled to witness later on. The four of us spent a lot of time together, and it didn't take long for Oz to sink his massive claws in. Me, he quickly labeled Sleazy Chen, because the previous summer I had discovered the stock market, and was obsessed with trying to figure it out. Sleazy Chen was a dank meme, perhaps in no small part because of the historical attitudes towards Asians in America. Sleazy Chen, Sleazy Chen, why are you so sleazy? Hatching all your schemes to make money, to lift your family out of poverty. Now Stan, and I hope he won't be mad at me for revealing this, but Stan, like a lot of teenage boys, would sometimes spend long periods of time in his room, with the door locked, on the internet, and in a very 
compromised state. Perhaps as a result of unsuccessfully attempting to gain entry to his room during one of these interludes, Oz came up with the label of Pizzle, defined by Webster's Dictionary as the penis of a bull. Pizzle, 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 pizzle. Pizzle, 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 pizzle. Here comes Pizzle. Surely nobody would want to befriend a boy with such a pathetic name. Now, as I said earlier, Leo struggled with the heavy expectations of his father. And sometimes he could come off as too serious, too grown up, a demeanor better suited to a man 30 years older. Oz stuck him with the character of Assholezoid. 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 The robot that sucks. Assholezoid. Assholezoid. Why don't you relax? Why don't you remove the metal rod sticking up your backside? This was an especially underhanded thing to do because Oz was Leo's roommate. And unlike me or Stan, whose backgrounds Oz was only somewhat familiar with, Oz knew why Leo behaved the way he did. And yet, Oz was merciless. Oz was such a talented promoter of our personalities that pretty soon it felt like the entire grade only saw us by these cheap caricatures. I would be greeted by Sleazy Chen, by people I barely knew, and I would just have to smile and say, yup, that's me. You have no idea who I am or where I come from, but you just summarize me perfectly, and it's nice to see you too. But the most bizarre aspect to me is that we ourselves got caught up in his memes as well. Stan would greet me with a cry of Sleazy Chen. I would in turn invoke Assholezoid. But to Leo's credit, he never went along with it. Because Leo had courage. Also bizarre is that I felt I needed to mold myself into this character that Oz had attached to me. I began seeing myself as Sleazy Chen like a role in a play, method acting. Because I thought it was just a game we were playing, and it would be uncool to object. Now kids, this is known as peer pressure. Never let anyone make you do what you feel deep down is wrong. We were playing a game, but in this particular game, there were no winners. Now, the story has a happy ending. After that year, we all moved out of that dorm and were no longer under the immediate influence of Oz. So we all just stopped talking to him and just became friends with each other. Leo, I still keep in touch with from time to time, and he was there to help me overcome some of the similar issues I had with my father. Stan became one of my best friends at Choke, though he moved out west a while ago and we've lost touch. Friends lift you up. They don't tear you down for their own selfish benefit. They don't take the thing that makes you great and twist it into something that makes you feel down about yourself. The weakness of parasites is that they need a host. If you just stop feeding them, stop giving them your energy, they will lose interest and move on to a new host. As for Oz, he is now happily employed at the intersection of the two most parasitic professions in America. <laughs>